college football cannot stand to turn away from a train wreck. And that's what these programs have basically turned into at this point. West Virginia beats Texas 31-23. to The postgame win expectancy was West Virginia 71%. Without Bijan Robinson, I did not expect much from this Longhorns offense at all. As far as the rushing offense goes, Keelan Roberts, uh, Robinson, who was at Alabama last year, transferred over to Texas because he thought the Alabama running back room was too loaded. He finally got his shot in this one, had nine carries for 111 yards and one touchdown. But the other kid, uh, Johnson, 15 carries, 77 yards. Like Texas put up 203 yards rushing on 28 attempts. That's 7.3 a clip and still couldn't really get anything done. Like They they did a Hudson card, 10 out of 16, 123 yards, one touchdown. Casey Thompson could do nothing. Four out of 14, 29 yards passing and an interception. Jared Dagey, again, I, <laughs> 27 out of 43, 290 yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Uh, what what are we doing? Like what what is Jared Dagey? I don't I don't. What did you call him? Uh, Schrodinger's quarterback. Schrodinger's quarterback, man. He, 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 when he's when you think he's good, he's bad. When you think he's bad, he's good. He doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah, just this, this is two really bad teams playing here. And the thing I noticed, like last week against Kansas. Texas just threw four really bad interceptions, like inexplicable. You can't do this interceptions. And that's why they lost this week. They, they, they threw one interception, but they went two for 10 on fourth down on third and fourth downs, two for 10 uh, yes. West Virginia only went 12 for 20. I mean, that's, that's 60, 60%. So like they were able to extend drives, but I mean, Texas just lost this game on third down. Um, I'm trying to see what that interception, the timing of that, Let's see. I honestly don't even see that in play-by-play. Play-by-play is a mess, man. Where, where the heck did they throw an interception? I don't think West Virginia did throw an interception. But where is... No, Texas did. Texas, Texas did? threw one, but... We know what? They don't have it either. Play. Yeah, play-by-play is so so off this year. Dude, it's so frustrating. E- either way, Texas has committed the cardinal sin of trying to let the quarterbacks compete in real time, which you just absolutely can't do. I mean, I think that... I think that they pulled card in the um, Arkansas game a little early, prematurely. Like that was just a, a, a salve. And then they beat the heck out of a couple really bad teams with Casey Thompson. And everyone thought, well, clearly Casey Thompson's the answer, but their problems run really, really, really deep here. Um, obviously locker rooms issues and everything. But I mean, I look at this, this again, in the second half, Texas is just, they just can't adapt at all. They lost Oklahoma and Oklahoma state games after big leads early. Whatever Sark is trying to do at halftime is just not working for this team. Um, well, this I will tell you this. To see, I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, give go them yeah. a little bit of uh, a little bit of credit because they did outscore West Virginia in the second half. Like yeah. they outscored them 14 to 10. But the problem was you were already down. You know, 21 to what? 21 to 10? Or no, sorry, they outscored them 13 to 10. But they yeah. like again. You're already down going into the half. The first four drives for Texas, three plays, six yards, punt. Three plays, one yard, punt. Three plays, four yards, punt. Three plays, three yards, punt. Like, And then they're down 14 to nothing before they ever see the ball again. Like, yeah. You're already in a hole, and I, there is there are so many cultural issues at Texas. And I told you in the offseason, when Sark was hired and he immediately started coming out basically spewing the the boosters garbage right off the bat, I thought, man, we are going to have some problems here. Like this is this is not a changeover from Tom Herman, like at all. This is it, it, honestly, I think Tom Herman would have handled it better because at least the the players knew that Tom Herman was on their side. Like Herman did not get fired for wins and losses; he got fired specifically because he did not get along with the boosters. Like that's or the the board of trustees, like the the people in charge, the people that write the checks, uh, because the players liked him, you know. At, at least some of them did. Obviously, there were some that wanted to get out of there. But uh, this this yeah, Sark thing yeah. is, I mean, you're gonna have to get some some company men in there if you want to be successful at Texas. Like that's that's the only I way did, they're going to turn this around. I did hear that they have uh, called a certain uh, recently recently unoccupied Big Twelve head coach to come talk about their defensive issues. I could I could believe that. I could. I, I think that Tom Herman only wins the Kansas game. Otherwise, I think Tom Herman gets this team to to they're they're they're, they're five and six right now instead of four and seven. Do you think? Looking at this, I I don't think they beat Oklahoma or Oklahoma State with Tom Herman. I think Baylor. I mean, dudes were just they should have beat Baylor, dude. They were yeah. dropping passes. 
Iowa State, Kansas, and then West Virginia, they just look flat. Like it looks like they've quit. Obviously, a lot's been going on since then. And so I do I do think this is going to be regime change issues, and they're going to have to there's going to be some churn. You what's wonder a, what's their defensive if, coordinator's name? Pete and- Pete Cook. It starts with a K and I, I, I want to call it something that it's not. So I never say it, but he's, he's, he's a, he was the Washington, he was at Washington too. Yeah. yeah. He was the one that I thought was kind of the brains behind the operation at, uh, at Texas. I mean, at Washington, like I, I never thought that yeah. Jimmy Lake was like the, the brains guy, but yeah, I, I thought this was a really good get for Sark and it has not turned out well uh, and, they, and they just don't have the personnel I, I think they took like something like five or six transfer linebackers trying to look for somebody to come play the right position and so it's just been yeah it's 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 rough scene for them I, I think Del Conte the athletic director will have enough patience to give him you know three years to turn this thing around it, but, but it, there's ways that you could say after everything that went on with Texas last year and after how underwhelming they've been for so long you could say Maybe this is a year zero situation, yeah, but yeah, at the that. University of Texas, you don't get a year zero really. And so, if if Del Conte can believe it's a year zero, I think I think that Sark can put the right pieces in with the talent to do what he wants to do. I think he's just gonna. I mean, what Texas has needed for years is someone to come in and say, "Shut up and let me win football games." Yeah. And if Sark's able to do that by you know pretending to kiss boosters' butts publicly, maybe that's maybe that'll work out. Here's hoping uh, the the thing that irritated me in the offseason is when the fan base and the boosters got all riled up about him hiring Mike Stoops as his linebackers coach. And then he, you know, came back, told Mike, hey, sorry, I can't hire you here. It's like, yeah. okay, who's actually running the show then? Because you can't you, negotiate with terrorists, man. You can't exactly. do it. Exactly. If you think that he's the best fit for your football team, go hire him. Like, don't let anybody else tell you what to do with your job. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.